Mod Jacks this side, we have many menu items that can be used in many different ways. So let's look at some tricks at using some of these menus and increasing our speed and efficiency and our productivity while working in XSI. First thing I'm going to talk about is tearing off menus. If we go over here to the main toolbar, we can see we have a lot of different menus here with different tools for different things. What we can do is come up here to this dashed line with the scissors icon and just left click it once. This essentially opens up a floating window. What this is, is the ability to go ahead and tear these menus off as many as we want or need, use the different tools that we need, and then what we can do is close them. We can also hit the minimize button here to minimize them to the bottom of the interface. It can get a little bit tedious, however, going all the way down here and expanding these menu items out. So a better way of working is with this name bar up here. If we left click and drag, we can drag this floating window wherever we want. If we double click on that area, we can tuck the window away where it stands so it won't get pushed to the bottom of the interface. So we can expand it, use a tool, collapse it, keep working, come back and expand it, use a tool, collapse it, and keep working. It's a very quick, very efficient, and really good way of working in Softimage X design. Now let's take a look at menu multiple selection. If we go over here to this eye icon and left click, it's going to open up a menu that allows us to adjust the visibility components and things like that of our camera viewport. So items that have a check marks next to them are going to be items that are visible in your viewport. So right now things like 3D geometry, cameras and lights, subdivision surfaces are all checked on. This means that they're all visible. Now if you want to turn something visible that on that is not on, for example, if it doesn't have a check mark, that means it's off, say like points, we can left click on points and points will now become visible in our viewport. So you can see the blue points that make up this sphere. Now, if I want to turn on something else, I can simply go to the menu and click on say polygon normals and it'll activate it. But you'll probably notice something that's a little bit annoying. Every time I activate or deactivate one of these options, the menu cancels out and I have to go back and dig into the menu again which can get pretty tedious. To get around that, hold down the shift key. Now what I can do is check objects and items on and off at will without having my menu close. And when I'm done, I can simply left click anywhere outside that menu and it'll automatically close. So it's a way of working a little bit faster, more efficiently with that type of menu item. Now let's look at context menus. Context menus can be activated one of two ways either by using the right mouse button on top of an object which you want to open the context menu for or by holding on the alt key and then right clicking on top of an object. Now this is really dependent on what situation you're in. Right now our situation is that we have a sphere selected in object mode which is why its wireframe is displayed in white. If we right click on top of the sphere it does not open a context menu. If we want to open a context menu what we need to do is hold on the alt key and then right click. And now you can see a context menu for this sphere. And I know this context menu belongs to the sphere because it says sphere up here in the name field. And we can see over here in the name field of the MCP or the main command panel that it says sphere. That's because the default name of this sphere is of course sphere. So let's alt and right click to open up the context menu. From here we can activate different tools and options that would usually be found in different menus around the interface. For example, some of the tools here can be found under the edit menu. Others can be found under view. Others can be found here in these different menu items. So it's a little bit of a faster way of reaching these tools because they're all located in one nice menu which makes it easier and faster for you to work in XSI. Let's have a look at another type of context menu. I'm going to hit U on the keyboard to go to ray casting polygon mode and I'm going to select a polygon here. If I hold down alt and right click I'll open up a context sensitive menu. Now if I just right click instead of holding alt, I'll still open a context sensitive menu, the same exact one. So you can see that in different situations we can use different button combinations. When we're in object mode, we can only open up the context sensitive menu by holding on alt and hitting the right mouse button key. If we're in a component or element mode here, for example, we have some polygons selected, we just have to right click on top of the object or the polygons, whichever you want, and it'll open up a context menu. And you can use the alt and right mouse button key or just the right mouse button key to do that. And here we can see many tools that are uh, used and focused on editing just polygons. And you'll see that up here in name field it will say tag polygons. This is to let you know that this is a context menu that pertains 
to the selected polygons right now. So if you had tagged points, it would say tagged points up here. If you had edges, it would say tagged edges, etc., etc. So that's another neat way of activating tools quickly and easily in Softimage XSI. This can cut down a lot of time in your projects and allow you to work more, much faster and much more productive in XSI.